If you want to launch your own software development company, but you don't know what you will need and where to start, you've landed at the right place. Continue watching. Now, let's agree that today we are talking about service companies or outsourcing companies and as to product companies, I'm going to cover them later on on this channel, so make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to not miss that episode. And if you're a veteran here, welcome back to again. And the first thing you will need in outsourcing business, that is a team. Now, in outsourcing business, your team is your main source of income because what you're selling as an outsourcing company, as a contractor company, workforce or brains. So it's not like in product businesses where team would be your main source of expenses. It's service businesses. So your team is your main asset, the asset that you're going to sell to your customers. Now, when it comes to launching a company, the team that you're going to attract to your projects to, uh, or to sell to your customers should be people who you can 100% rely on. Because if you hire someone who is not reliable or whom you have not tested in advance, you might end up losing the customer in the best scenario or gaining the reputation that would not allow you to gain any more customers in future. Another thing that those team members should not abandon you in the middle of the project and leaving you with no resources to finish it. So like I mentioned, your first team member should be the people whom you can absolutely trust. There are different sources where you can find those reliable people. Those could be your ex-workers, those could be your current uh, colleagues, if they agree to work with you. Those could be your friends or your business acquaintances, or those could be your relatives, for example, your spouse or your siblings or any other relations that you're having and in whom you can have some sort of trust. So now how you're going to attract those people to your future potential team? Now the first thing you should need to do is to talk to them whether they actually want to work with you, whether they are willing to risk their current jobs or to leave their current jobs for you and for your idea and to work with you or they're interested in earning extra money or at all if they're interested to work in outsourcing business and the business that you are launching. That the third thing you should do is to ask for their accessibility and for their readiness and for their willingness to work with you. Now, the second thing you want to speak with your potential team members is how you're going to operate together. What I advise is to arrange some sort of contractual agreement with that person. And how this is going to work is that I propose that you hire them for an hourly basis, which means that you don't have any extra obligations when it comes to salaries or any benefits that you as a company should provide. At the launching stage, this is vital because you don't have a resource to hire people and to pay them full-time salaries if you don't have any customers yet. And here, my advice would be to offer them higher rates and higher wages than they receive at their current workplace or that they could have gained in other company or with someone else. Because at the launching stage, you cannot offer them much. You cannot offer them any extra benefits. You cannot offer them conditions, terms and conditions that would convince them to leave their current place or consider working with you. So what you can do is to offer higher wages and higher rates than they are used to receiving. It's like pay people decently to keep them. Now, why am I mentioning the team? The first step that you should do is find a team, people who are going to work with, because the second step and the second thing you will need is expertise. Now, the expertise that you're going to build your business in will depend heavily on the people that you're going to attract. So whether those people would be yourself only or people that you can trust, you will really have to rely your expertise and to develop your company in the direction that the skills of the people you have provide. So like, for example, you decided to launch a mobile development company, but you have zero mobile developers in your team. So what are you going to do? Are you going to look for projects just to end up with the situation where you can offer no workforce to develop that project? Or if you're going to launch, say, an e-commerce agency for building e-commerce websites, but again, you have nobody who works with, like, say, Shopify or other platforms to build those e-commerce stores and so on. So what are you going to do? But if you have in your team, for example, data engineers or NLP engineers, and you yourself are very good with databases, does it make more sense to launch a data engineering agency? It does. 
Now, after you have team with whom you can work and after you defined your expertise, the third and the main thing that you will need is customers. Now, all the rest can come after this one, because if you don't have customers, there is no sense for you to launch a business or to register as a legal entity. You need to secure at least one long-term customer with whom you can sign a long-term agreement like for years to come so that you could, based on this expertise and based on that experience with this customer, develop and grow your company further. As soon as you have somebody who would cover your expenses for a month, then you can grow and then you can actually think like a businessman. Until you don't have those customer or customers, right? To start with, there is no sense in proceeding. So until you have this one, nothing else really matters. Now, a quick interruption. If you like the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to grow and launch your IT company, make sure to check out all the other videos on this channel. There are numerous videos related to launching and growing your IT business. And for your convenience, they are divided into separate playlists. So make sure to check them out. So as soon as you secured your first customer or your first customers, the next thing you want to do is to not stop and develop your sales process. Now, on this stage, I do not say to hire a sales manager or a salesperson because you should yourself understand how your sales funnels look like. Where are you going to look for customers? It's not like um, you've made some profits on that first customer and you're hiring someone to do the job for you and to look the customers for you. If you yourself have not defined what your sales process looks like, there is no sense in hiring someone else and telling them, do what you like, but bring me customers. It's not like things work. So the first thing you will need to do is to define sales funnels, be it, I don't know, let's start with as simple as Upwork, LinkedIn and other platforms where you're going to look for customers, whatever it is, and sales process as it is. And the next thing I'm writing is files and documents. And what I'm meaning by this, in most cases, these are case studies and maybe your GitLab account that would be sufficient to show to your customers and that is enough for them. Of course, if you're talking with business decision makers, they would, would ask from you some legal documents and so on and so forth. This is why I'm advising you to start with technical decision makers because all they care about is your expertise. Now, after you set up your sales process and you have, have some consistent requests and consistent leads coming in and maybe some already consistent projects, the next thing you want to do is to develop your website. Right, build your website only at the stage five. Now, what do you need your website for? Now, two things. The first thing is it's your portfolio because this is where you're going to show your case studies and what you actually done for other customers to impress your future potential customers. The next purpose your website should serve to is SEO, search engine optimization, because you want to potentially get leads passively, like inbound leads coming to your website, through your website's blog, through your website's articles, and to contact you directly without you having to do anything, anything else. So you want to optimize your website for future SEO. Even if you're not planning to do this straight away, this is perfectly okay because SEO takes a long time and this is not an overnight process where you optimize your website and this is it. You're going to receive clients so, like the next morning. No, this is a long run, uh, but you want to make it customizable and optimizable for any future changes you want to make. So the next thing that you will need as an outsourcing provider is tools. Now, I have talked a lot about tools that you will need as a software development contractor. Let's start with communication tool for your team. Would it be a Skype, Telegram, Slack, whatever? What project management tool you're going to use? Will it be Jira? Don't recommend that if you're not an enterprise level company. You track Team Gantt or any other PM tool if you're choosing. As a project management tool, you can also use Trello at the beginning uh, stages of your you know, software development company. But of course, as soon as you start working on agile projects and as soon as you start launching sprints in your company, then you will need something more decent than Trello. But for like, you know, day-to-day -day activities and day-to-day -day tasks, for example, you want your um, website administrator to make some changes to the website, this is where you can use Trello as well as anything else. 
Okay, so the next thing would be provide your team members with corporate email, with PM tool, project management tool, with communication tool, your time tracking tool if your contractors work on an hourly basis and so on. Those could also be sales tools if you're going to invest into premium accounts, for example. So make a list of the tools that you need urgently, not what you want to have, but what you really need and you can't do without. By the way, I broke down my costs in one of my previous videos, so you can check it out on my channel. So the next thing that you will need as an outsourcing contractor is PR. It's not like sales, because in sales, direct sales, you're contacting clients directly and you'll be speaking projects. And when it comes to PR, you might not contact your clients directly, it basically means your online presence because sometimes clients, before they actually sign the contract with you, they want to know who you are and are you actually alive? Are you legal? Or who are, are you? And if you have like no social media accounts and you don't need social media accounts like everywhere, I know, on Twitter, on TikTok, on Instagram or whatever. You need uh, some corporate um, business accounts and social media accounts like on LinkedIn or on Xing or on Facebook. I wouldn't invest much into PR because you don't want to spread yourself thin and be present on everywhere and nowhere. So LinkedIn and Facebook might do for a start. This will only show to your potential customers that you are alive, that there is something happening in your company, that you actually care about your business. You might also want to get some nice feedback online on platforms like Clutch.io or on uh, maybe on Upwork, you want to build your profile on Upwork, corporate profile, agency profile on Upwork. By the way, check out this playlist if you are interested in that. You don't want to have um, your account somewhere where your potential customers might not see them at all. So the next thing you want to have is to have corporate bank account or a separate personal account if you want to register your business legally as of yet. So I'm calling this finances. And what I mean here is to have your corporate bank account and to have your financial management in presence. And what I mean by financial management is that you should have a very detailed track of incoming payments and your expenses. And you should absolutely divide your salary and your company's profits. And for that, for that end, you should need your corporate bank account, or if you are not yet legally registered, at least have a separate personal account that you will treat as a corporate account so that you will not consider those money as your own. And now the ninth thing you should need, sorry about that, and that is registering your business legally. And I have done a separate video on registering your business legally uh, in Estonia, and you can find some other videos on this channel about registering your company, so make sure to check it out. And uh, this should be your very conscious step because you should, by this time, you should have some constant income coming in every month and you should have your sales processes set up that supply your business with projects, with new projects and new customers and thus table payments every single month. So at this stage, it makes sense to register your business legally and to operate as a legal business entity. And the 10th thing you will need is pain endurance. Call it stress resistance, resilience or whatever you call it, but it's actually how well you're enduring chewing the glass and staring into the asylum. To be honest, not everybody is made for this and that is okay because we have different stress resistance level. Like I said, it's how well you bear with pain because pain is inevitable. You will get discouraged every single day and you will be wanting to close your business every single day in some periods of your business life and that is okay so it truly really is up to you whether you're up to this pain endurance or not and especially in service businesses this is extremely important because in product businesses you have more like of a freedom to do with your product whatever you like you are the master of the situation and in service businesses you have to deal with different types of customers by the way watch this video of mine where i talk about difficult customers you should never work with. And this is why you are dependent on someone else, which adds up to the stress level excessively. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you didn't. And subscribe if you still haven't and click the notification bell to be here on time every single Wednesday to learn more about how to launch and grow your IT business. Till next Wednesday. Bye.